This is a HeadGum Podcast. Oh my my, we are back doing the Halloween Spooktacular for another week, and it's Urban Legend. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Chris Cabin. Eric Siska. And we hate movies. We all go a little mad sometimes. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. Sometimes. That is what I... Time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. They're coming to get you, Barbara. He's sick for fuck's sake. seen one too many movies. Now, Sid, don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. What the fuck are you doing, Wicker Man? What an excellent day for an exorcism. Couldn't have done like a hook on the door, Chris. Hook on the door. No, yeah, just <laughs> let let it go. Let Eric, it die. How about Eric Legend? <laughs> yeah, <thank laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> rewind. Hello, everyone. Welcome to We Hate Movies. Thank you for tuning in. As always, that's right. It is the second to last uh, Halloween spooktacular episode, and I got to mm. tell you, I'm already yeah. sad. One because the spooktacular is coming to an end. Two because we're talking about Urban Legend from oh. 1998, directed by Jamie Blanks. Let me just say that yeah. you do not need to be sad because some people might not know this, but right now available on Patreon.com slash We Hate Movies is a full episode on Van Helsing. What? So your spook your spooktacular could can... continue. Exactly. That's it. it. Could continue tomorrow. For some folks, the spooktacular is five new episodes. For other smarter, better people, the spooktacular is six episodes. Eric, you said spoop, and I was like, I was wondering, <laughs> I was wondering what spoop I'm, was. Boop. I'm just, a little tired today, but I've spoop. <laughs> it sounds like a I'm sloppy poop. <laughs> spoop. Oh man, I went, I went to my grandma's house and spooped all over the toilet. I didn't flush it. Sorry, grandma. Oh man, I went to the theater to see Urban Legend. I spooped all over the screen. <laughs> it's a scary shit. It's like when you shit and you look down and you're just horrified. Like, what did I eat? <laughs> is a spooktacular. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what, this is the second time for me in like a month watching this movie. Because this was sort of like a late addition uh, to the lineup. Sure. And fuck, man, what a struggle the second time around. I think it's a fun movie, actually. I'm, I'm, is, I'm in the camp of fun movie. Wow. It's yeah. fun, but, you know, it's still yeah. urban legend. Oh, well, sure. Uh, well, this movie is if somebody took their, their love of urban legends a bit too far. Mm -hmm. Which sounds a lot like the plot of Scream, which is somebody took their love of scary movies a bit too far it's oh. almost as if it's the same movie just right. changing the thing that's, that's an interesting idea yeah, that might could, that might work out you could do actually. that with anything right like like someone takes their love for rocks a little too far and it's a geologist Ooh, the geologist <laughs> and everyone's just like uh being uh uh, uh postmodern about rocks yeah exactly. wouldn't that just be my bloody valentine <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's minors oh, in that movie. Right, right. Minor horror. <laughs> well, I hope they continue. Well, I hope they get their jobs back, first of, first of that's, all. First that's of all. true. I first hope of all I'm of bringing them. back work to the haunted minors. <laughs> I especially love the one that was in 3D. We're going to give them spoops. <laughs> Unlimited spoops. <laughs> We're going to sign into the law. No, it's a subsidy for spoops. Don't we love spoops, folks? Don't we love <laughs> spoops? I, you know, I love golden showers and especially spoops. <laughs> Even Russia doesn't know it, but I love spoons no more. No one's got a tape of that yet. I have <laughs> special underwear for my spoops. <laughs> the Saudis might know about it, but you know, we're good. Uh, you know what's weird? The start of this movie, this like uh, Phoenix Pictures logo. Sure. Did anybody think it's like that match lighting at the beginning? It was like the beginning of Are You Afraid yes, of yes. the Dark? Oh, wow. instantly what I thought. I, I was, was like, like, Amazon. <laughs> it's like, <"Is> this... <laughs> you idiot Bezos. You <laughs> fucked it again. I thought this was enough. Are You Afraid of the Dark motion picture? I think there are episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark that are scarier than this fucking movie, though. Well, there's a clown one, so that's immediately like yeah. that's check mark for me. Or that uh, the one where like the little girl's a fucking porcelain doll. Look out below. <laughs> yeah, Holy, you speaking spoops. of spoops, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I uh, you spooped when you saw that. I spooped a lot watching that show. Dude. <laughs> Whoa. 
No, I mean, like, it was one of those things when I, like, you, I started the episodes really scared, but by, then by the end, I'm like, ah, it's not so scary. <laughs> nah, not well, because by the end of it, you're just back with all those fucking Canadians sitting around a campfire. <laughs> well, Nothing help. scary about that. Because the clown one, it was like a clown bed. Yeah. Like in The Simpsons. Yeah. It was, it was a oh, cre- yes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, so it's a cartoon. Okay, I can distance here. Are also, you afraid of the dark uh, was really scarier than Goosebumps? Goosebumps was, was for oh, babies. Yeah. That was for babies. That's baby I, shit. That's American baby <laughs> shit. I honestly don't remember either like episodes i remember them existing yeah i just don't remember you know what my all-time fave are you afraid of the dark episode is oh let's go for it it's the one uh with ryan gosling where he plays a kid who's obsessed with death and he owns a hearse and Uh, like he turns the radio dial like all the way to one end and he can like hear voices from beyond the grave does does he seduce an old woman yeah does he? Does he? Is he a granny shagger? Is he doing no, Harold it's, and Maude? it's not Harold and Maude. <laughs> Harold and Maude. But by I think the he's way. just fucking old people, though. Anyway. Oh, oh cool. Well. Is Harold and Maude? Is that like the premier granny shagging movie? Oh, definitely. That's like, like yeah, yeah. When you do your vows, when you're getting the like old granny shag wedding, <laughs> yeah, my big fat granny shag wedding. When you're doing <laughs> that, you quote Harold and Maude in your vows. Oh, yeah, you have to. So that's like the Oscar one. We need like a popcorn granny. Any shagging. <laughs> I'm sure it's coming. I'm just, you know, we're way off the rails already, but I don't care. Yes. The final episode of Age Gap Lover, which we're referring to. Yes. Did anyone get that far? No. Not at all. Oh, that's only it's, you, man. It's a magician. <laughs> he's like a teenager. You don't have to say anything Not else. a teenager. He's like his early 20s. Oh, and the woman's man. only in her, like, late 50s. It's, 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 it's a more reasonable Age Gap it's Lover. It's the most socially acceptable episode yet. And he put, he got a, her whole fucking family into a room, man. And, and he made them disappear. <laughs> no, he made his dignity disappear. Oh. Because what he did was, he did this like big Alice in Wonderland magic trick reveal <sighs> of, Jesus will Christ. you marry me? And she's oh, like, no. oh, oh, we'll have to talk about that. No. Yeah. Oh, dude, oh dude, my asshole just clenched, <laughs> closed <laughs> for business. No spoops for you, my friend. <laughs> oh, my God, that's you. It's really it's worth watching the last episode. Now I'm tuning in. Uh, this movie is uh, you'd put this in a it's a it's a small a small ish subgenre, very specific. It's what I like to call post scream Y two K horror. Yes, oh, boy. Mm-hmm. It's where it's where you know we're, we're like building as, a bunker. <laughs> we're worried about computers. The snappy. The, the snappy nappy. Much like how like independent crime films of the late 90s yep. and 2000s like aped Tarantino. Yep. This is just aping Kevin Williamson. Every character is the smartest one in the room. They're all fucking hilarious. They have a line for everything. What I forgot is how much I hate everyone. <laughs> oh, yeah. I there's forgot no one to like. About, like, Scream, you liked some of them. Yeah, you, you should like Nev Campbell at the end of that movie. Like, oh, she's, right. you know, she had a rough go of it. You yeah. Know? We were supposed to like Alicia Vitt in this movie, but no fucking thanks. No, 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 <laughs> no. Is that a hard V? I mean, I've always it... said the hard uh, V for the W. I, I don't, I don't know how yeah. she says it. I don't know how she feels mm. about it. Um, I just also know that she was uh, on Sybil. She was on Sybil for many years. As were most people on Sybil. So, she, yeah. It, it, she had like one episode of The Walking Dead. This is a this oh, is actually a care. who's who of uh, the late nineties. By the way, you got Alicia absolutely Wit or Vit, depending on who you know. Uh, Jared Leto, that's right. Ugh. Future Academy Award winning Joker. That's uh. <laughs> How about uh, that? Popular film category, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Oh, what, what is that? He's got this. What is this? Mobius movie? Oh, Morbius. Yeah, yes. he's a vampire in that movie. Oh, great. Oh, he's playing Morbius. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. Which will definitely happen now that Venom was huge. So it's part of the Venom verse. Yeah, I think yes. it is. It's like the. It's the so. It's the Marvel don't want these characters universe. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I, I just can't fucking wait. <laughs> can't wait a- for a fucking Mysterio movie or whatever the fuck. This is a movie about people of a lot of urban legends. We open. On a dark and stormy night. Right. Oh, uh, a night. Much like tonight. And uh, it's a woman driving a, a SUV of some kind. Yeah. She's listening to a sultry radio program hosted by Tara Reid. Uh, it's under the covers with Sasha. I don't know. Like, I, th- th- <laughs> It's from the campus radio station, by the way. They're, just, yep. yes. they're allowing this to be broadcast. That's Dude, a bit weird. It was crazy because all I could think about is when like Eric and I worked at the Purchase radio station, it was so much like... You cannot say this. You cannot say that. You right. cannot play like these songs before this hour. And Tara Reed's just talking about fucking sucking dicks in this movie, like right on the air, yeah. dude. 
well, the the, the thing is, uh, popular, what I what, popular show. What I learned <laughs> afterwards was these are all urban legends she's telling. The we start with the uh, replacing uh, birth control with baby a- aspirin. Right now, that is apparently an urban legend. I guess so. Like, I, I, I guess, guess that, it's something that happened once. <laughs> yes. And or like you know, oh. Oh, you, my cousin's sister had a blah, 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 you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what uh, urban legend they don't cover? And I feel if this movie was like made today or if there was like a sequel, this would totally come out. That fucking thing. I've had people tell me this IRL and I've heard people like talk about it on the Internet. That whole fucking like. Yeah, my dad's friend, he's a tow truck driver, and he was driving down the street at night, Mm -hmm. and there was this limo that was broken down on the side of the road, and it had a flat tire, and he went and he helped fix this flat tire, and one of the back windows rolled down, and oh my God, you guys, who was in that limo? Oh my God, was it um, A Star Was Born's Bradley Cooper? (laughs) It was Donald Trump. No. And he asked this guy's information, boom. Next morning, his mortgage was paid off. No, that's not you're true. You're Absolutely, joking. that's you're a joking. thing. That's a thing that a friend of mine told me in high school, and I've heard people elsewhere on the internet like say that same story years before he yeah. was a fucking joke game show host. Well, we're run by urban legends at this point. That's what all that yep. QAnon shit is. It's urban <laughs> yep. legends given a voice. <laughs> that's true. I, Andrew, I thought you were going to talk about like, and back in that back seat was Rod Stewart, and he needed his stomach pumped because <laughs> oh, he yeah. drank so much semen but yeah which that's is, one with, i've heard that same story but with yeah. gwen stefani that was that was all over the middle school bus ride yeah. a couple oh, times Rich, richard gears hamster romance exactly which is referenced in this it movie is. briefly but yeah. so is the stomach pumping with this radio station apparently because like some girl calls into tara reed and is yeah. like i just blew this dude and it feels i can feel sperm swimming in my body <laughs> oh right and she's like should the i call baby looked at you <laughs> 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 They're doing a backstroke right now. <laughs> and apparently, and I was looking through the Wikipedia to try to understand some of these urban legends, and they say that's like a reference to that. The, the, the Rod pumping. Stewart yes, thing, yeah. yeah, which is... I've I always heard Rod Stewart as well, not not Gwen Stefani, which yeah. means it had to have happened to Rod Stewart. No. <laughs> <laughs> we we have two step verification. That's yeah, QAnon, that's it. baby. <laughs> that guy said it. I believe in it. Now it's our religion. Well, You're it has totally to come right. from somewhere anonymous. Yeah, that's that's a big thing. Oh, Q's telling all the good secrets about Rod Stewart. Dude, <laughs> thank you, Q, you. for telling the secrets of Rod Stewart. If you're listening to this and you believe that, jump in a lake and don't come up for air. <laughs> so she's driving, and what's, we, we, we kind of... By the of, way, this, uh, another urban legend real quick is this podcast is funded by George Soros. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. He's a big wig. He may be a Patreon subscriber. We're not yeah, sure. He might also be the head of HeadGum. I don't know. <laughs> He loves the Nexus. <laughs> but yeah, so I love that there's a great shot. She drives by like a pristine gas station. Oh, like right. well lit. It's beautiful. And she, That's an urban legend. <laughs> she's also singing a tune here, though. She's total eclipse of the heart at this yeah, point. Because yes. she's so wrapped up in singing. She just drives right she, by. And you see this like the gas needle just like <laughs> bing, bing, she, bing. She purrs through a quarter gallon. It's, <laughs> it's insane. One it's, second. It's an SUV, guys. <laughs> I got yeah. oh, true. Gas guzzler. So, they, oh, they, yeah. they, they, a they, comment. They, yeah. They to pump that car's stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Siphon the tank, dude. <laughs> Thank you, QAnon, for talking about pumping the gas out of the Hummer. <laughs> oh, oh Homer, Homer, that shit makes perfect sense. <laughs> oh my god, I never all... thought about that. Um, <laughs> so uh, she 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 gets to the gas station. It is, wouldn't you know it, Brad Dourif? Now we're talking Brad Dourif. But this is what I love. It's like nice gas station, yeah. singing total clips of the uh, the heart. An eighth of a mile later, haunted gas station. Mm-hmm. Yes. So she's honking like she's in New Jersey, by the way. This guy's going to pump her gas. Because it's pouring rain. Oh, That's I the see. only reason. Yeah. But so. she's in Maine, which is you get out, you get off your duff <laughs> and you pump that fucking gas, dude. So uh, Brad Dourif comes out. Everybody, a light applause. Um, and Brad Dourif, by the way, the best, my opinion, hmm. uh, best Person? actor associated mostly with horror movies. 
It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's kind of a weird distinction. You yeah, know what I mean, like, I mean not, who else is there? I mean, Robert uh, England. You England, know? Yeah. England. Is you're right. I think a, you're right. This he's is, a good actor. I think he is. But uh, Duraf, no, not England. <laughs> no, I, I'm saying I think England is a good actor. Oh. But I'm saying Brad. I'm agreeing with Steve that Brad Dourif is the best of the bunch. If you were putting on a play and you right. had to choose, like I don't know, Brad Dourif or Kane Hodder or something, and Kane Hodder as Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> She's like, wherefore art thou, Romeo? <laughs> right here, stupid. It's <laughs> like angry Kane Hodder he's impression. He's a great actor. Uh, so, but, but anyway, so he's like, uh, and he's being Brad Dorf, which is creepy. I mean, like, he has know, to have a good sense of humor. Yeah. Because clearly this is like, we need a weirdo. <laughs> yes. And oh, who can play a stuttering weirdo? Here comes no, Brad no, Dorf. No, no, we, we really need the stutter. Yeah, no, no we, we can't make it with the limp and the you know look. But the the stutter like makes this whole thing happen. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I was trying to remember about this story though, because I've heard the person in the back seat. Yeah. I didn't recall a stuttering element. Maybe no, I'm I think wrong. usually the way I've heard it is like it's another car driving alongside, honking at you, You're like, yeah. oh my god, right. someone's after me. And but what, what the guy was really trying to warn her about was right. the maniac in her back. See, well, yeah, yeah, we're playing fast and loose with the oh, actual. Oh, legend. Oh, oh, get there. The, the this stu- ain't your mama's urban legends. I see. The stutter is really just there for like just to drag it out, make yeah. it suspenseful. Yeah. Like, he does a bad. Going. So he, uh, you know, she she gives him her card a card, and he notices something. He runs back, and then he comes out very nervous, and he's like. There's there's a p- p- problem with your credit card. You got to come in, and the, the 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 company's on the phone or something, you know, in a big stutter. And she's creeped out, but she's like, "All right, you know, I got to figure this out." Right. Which also bad idea, lady. I wouldn't no one go anywhere. I'm like, you know what? I don't need gas that bad. Well, she uh, kind of knows it. She's like, "Oh fuck!" And it's just one of those like, "Well, what are we gonna do here? The car has no gas." Yeah. She's Actually, got, he's been pumping does. already. Just drive away. <laughs> she's got mace in her hands. So she's like, "All right, let's go in with mace." And like, the thing is, Brad Dourif, just be like, "Hey, look, put your hands Say way so- up." Put your hands way up. <laughs> Write it down. Thank yeah. you. How about yes. that? Yes. How about that? That's Pen and paper, idea. dude. Instead, he instantly starts locking the door with <laughs> yes. this weird, like, string me- like mechanism. And it's like, okay, this is creep town. And you never need to touch this woman. Like, that's A number one for you, Brad Dourif. Don't touch this lady. He's like, yep. lady, I got I got it. And she's like, no, 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 no. Please don't. That's with mechanisms. That your house is built on mechanisms. Yes. You're a. Creepy Pee Wee. Yeah, why or, the fuck does he live saw. in a, a gas station slash fun house? Like, what is this shit? <laughs> so uh, she maces him, and yeah, you know, that's Brad Dourif's fault. I, I, you know, yes. Nothing to feel bad about there, lady. Not the first time he's been maced on camera, and probably not the last, <laughs> then, to be completely I, I honest. I thought she was going to like grab the phone and call 911, and she grabs the phone, and she just throws it through a window, which is great. <laughs> Subverts <laughs> expectations. And she jumps through the window, and this she's... This movie's breaking all the rules, dude. She's running to her car to get out of there. And then, like, Brad Dourif like jumps on her hood and she like drives away. He like, gets it... hit by this car. <laughs> and and it's he... a lot. He, I mean, he's really trying to save this woman. He nails the line. There's someone in your back seat. Yep. And oh. she drives away. And oops, it's an asshole. yeah. It's my kid's asshole. <laughs> 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 it's not. It's a marauder. Uh, and uh, cuts her head off. And then boom. We're and then, and then the uh, car doesn't swerve off the That's road and fucking question. go into a fucking rock. Yes. Right. Like, how is this movie continuing? It's like a <laughs> short film. Because this SUV is going to flip right over, drive off a cliff, whatever the hell's it's going on. Clearly a really curvy road yeah. while she's singing. She's going back and forth like it. <laughs> it's a this is- car, uh, <laughs> strip. It's going to roll over and explode. Sorry. How, how can you swing an axe... I don't. I know cars were bigger then, or whatever, or they're bigger now. I don't know. Like an SUV, it's big. I get that, but like, take an axe, go into the back seat of a car, and yeah. I try to get a good swing going. No, no. I don't think you're going to have it. Maybe but also, a hatchet. Maybe yeah, yes. a hatchet. And also, yeah, to your point, Eric, like physically, like you what? You what? Are you four inches away from the driver tops? Well, you can't get a good, a good crank on that thing. Did, did you notice uh, in the the Tribune trivia listings? Is that an urban legend about axes and backseats? <laughs> no, but there's a thing about like whatever was written into the script. It was a smaller car, it's like a Jeep Wrangler or yeah. something, and they were like. No, this has to be an SUV because you can't swing an axe in a fucking Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> Although if it's a Jeep Wrangler with a soft top and it's down, that's oh, right. I could get a real see... fun good crank yeah, on there. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you could, you could choke up like David Ortiz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this murderer, this marauder is built like David Ortiz anyway. That's yeah. right. Something to keep in mind for the end of this film. Are we going to spoil it now up, up top or what's the I move I kind of think 
you have to. Yeah, yeah sure, I, fuck it. It's tiny little Rebecca Gayhart. Yes. yes. Nothing to lose is Rebecca Gayhart. Mm-hmm. Noxima's Rebecca Gayhart. She weighs 90 pounds. She weighs yeah. 90 yeah. pounds. <laughs> The guy, the guy that actually, and the, he's credited as killer in the credits, is built like the Undertaker. <laughs> I no. don't get it. Do you also, think she's wearing like football equipment or something? I, I guess. I need so. to see that though. Well, Maybe yeah, she's thought, on another killer's back. Got like David Byrne shoulders. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I have this big winter jacket. I'm also wearing the famed big suit underneath it. <laughs> I've got a tape. I've got to play you. <laughs> Psycho killer, Cascas Yeah. That's, that's exactly right. You can come between us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's it doesn't make any sense. There's also a great thing, though. Again, Tribune Trivia, America's number one news source for entertainment bits. Uh, there's a thing about how the, in the original script, because it's set in Maine, it was supposed to be in the winter. Oh. The shoot was in the springtime, and they were like, oh... We don't have the money, nor do we want to bother with creating a bunch of fake snow. So we'll just set it in like spring or autumn or whatever. But the killer was written to have the fucking snow pants and the boots <laughs> and the jacket, and they just left it. It's a big parka with a big furry parka. And I guess that's like the iconic look they were going for. Oh, right. you're, you're trying to create a horror icon with this. Yeah. It's uh, parka a pants. Piss poor job of it. It's, Jesus. it's just not practical. You're trying to kill people and you're sweating bullets. You're mm-hmm. running around in snow pants. Come <laughs> on. So, what are you doing? It's just so indistinct. I've seen yeah, uh, people with those hoods before. Yeah. And, and she's dressed like been killing people. She's dressed like Kurt Russell in the thing. <laughs> Yeah, Kurt Russell's and, a hero, <laughs> and we just had what was it? Uh, I know what you did last summer has like the fisherman yeah. outfits. It, this yeah. is very a, a similar, too better, similar. A though. little better. It is. It is better, and that's a better universe, I yes. guess. At I least w- that costume agree. is fucking you know time of year appropriate. Right. This might be a more fun movie than those yeah. movies. I, I oh, actually, yeah. I, I, yeah. I would, I would, I would turn my key for that. So we're at Pendleton. We're at fake Pendleton University, and it's actually, I guess. Like it, we play it off like we're telling a st- that urban legend to a bunch of people or mm-hmm. something like fake that. Fake university, yeah, fake university. It's, uh, that's Ur- an urban legend. <laughs> but it's a weird like. Are we? Are they talking about the thing that just happened, or is it like? Are we just so happening to? to I think we're just so happening. In, they're telling the same you, story. Dude, everyone's you know telling it? urban legends all of the time. You know, it's <laughs> weird. It's not unlike the opening of Drew Barrymore at the beginning of Scream, and uh. then they start talking about it right in the first scene at school. Mm, uh. It's it's weird that it's like that. It's a little strange. <laughs> but at least in Scream, it makes logical sense that they'd be talking about it, unlike this, where nobody knows that woman's dead yet. Uh, it's Anna, uh, It's Michael Rosenbaum of Smallville fame. And Lex stuff. Luthor. Lex Luthor, and, and he played the Flash on the Justice League, did the voice, did a really good job, everybody. If oh, me, in the animated show? Speaking of bad t-shirts and people talking to you, now here I am. <laughs> here I come. Um, uh, yeah, it's him. See, by the way, did you see that Venom movie? <laughs> uh, yeah, stay tuned for Worst of 2018. Uh, no, so, yes, he's telling it's Alicia Witt and the killer herself, Rebecca Gayhart. And Jared Leto. Is oh, that's there. right. They're all just, like, sitting in, like, a campus, like, commune chatting yeah. about it. It should be Urban Legends you. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, much like uh, the Tiny t- Toons go to Acme Luniversity, <laughs> where your concentration is in cartoon gags. It's like if David Fincher directed an episode of Friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. Because they're on the couch. We're drinking coffee. Huge Friends-esque coffee mugs, by the way. You see the size of these fucking things? You fit a fucking pig head in there. <laughs> it's like the beginning of So I Married an Axe Murder. You're following that latte around. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yes, he, uh, it's like, uh, Jared Leto's playing Parker, I want to say, or something, or sure, or something. whatever. Piece of shit. Jared yeah. Leto. No, no, he <laughs> is a piece Jared of Leto shit. Jared Leto as piece of shit. <laughs> I think it's, wait, is it Paul? Paul. Paul. That's right. Oh, that's, that, yeah, oh yeah, that's something right. like that. Or is it, that's, he played Paul Allen in, uh, oh, oh, maybe that's got a little chow or of. something. <laughs> But he's like, oh, he's like blowing up Michael Rosenbaum's spot. He's like, oh, I think the way I heard it was like this, that, and the other thing, you fucking dick. Oh, yeah. So it's like, who is the bigger fan of (laughs) urban legends? What a bunch of colossal losers. 
Oh my lord! What yeah. about rural legends? Yeah, <laughs> some scarecrows that come to oh, life. No, yeah, I've that... actually I got a few. I got two. <laughs> I remember from growing up in the countryside. Now one is great. It was like, hey, you know, uh, down by the Esopus Creek there. One time, a get this big city mafia guys buried some money over there. Oh, second or oh. second ah, geez, rural. I better, I better go out there digging. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> second rural legend. Oh uh, yeah, that's the. Uh, that's a field UFO landed there. <laughs> That's we had all a, of it. We had a rural legend cabin. Do you do you ever hear this tale? There was a thing. I forget the what the name of the dude was, but it was a thing where it was like, and this might be just a universal urban legend, and yeah. I just I didn't major in urban legending. Yeah, uh, so I don't know for sure. Oh, that wasn't one of your electives. <laughs> no, but there was a thing. Do you recall this story? It was the thing where there was a guy. Uh, he was walking down like a, a rural, rural road uh, at night with his wife. His wife was hit and killed by a drunk driver oh god, who sped terrible. away. Oh my god, that's terrible! And dude, so every night Wait, at the what? same time, no. this guy walks the the road back oh, and forth oh, with shoot. an axe, yeah. looking for the car. <laughs> that was the, that was, the, and I forget what the, no. they called this dude, but it was like, yeah, let's go out to that road and see if we can find Mister Tisdale or like whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> Mr. And kids would like, I don't know if kids actually would like hop in the car, but it was always like, oh, we should go out there man we should totally go out there and find mr tisdale there was a <laughs> let's get drunk and hit him <laughs> <laughs> there's scare him real good uh, there is a guy around where i used to smoke weed in the bronx uh who would just come up to you and push his fingers up against his lips asking for a cigarette oh that's like an urban legend but he was a real person that i saw <laughs> That that's that's a ghost you carry with you. <laughs> oh, dude. I'll wake up screaming sometimes. Because it would be dead silent. You're a little stone. And this guy's like, Ugh. Oh, that's <laughs> fucking terrifying. Uh, but so, oh, Jared Leto. I pulled up the Tribune page. His character's name is Paul Gardner. Paul Gardner. Mm. Uh, cousin of Paul Allen. <laughs> so the, but like Leto's I like. I think the piece of shit's his middle name. <laughs> oh, oh yes. I see. Leto is like, uh. You know, showing up Michael Rosenbaum. Who's Parker. Park. Oh, he's Parker. Yes. Got it. Okay. So he's Parker and like whatever, Michael Rosenbaum. And like <laughs> Michael Rosenbaum's like, hey man, next time you write a campus-wide expose on E. coli, eat the burger yourself. Which is like a bad piece of backstory because it's such a snappy screenplay. It, it goes by in a second yeah, and you're but like. By the way, Paul says that he almost won the student Pulitzer. <laughs> That's for right. That, piece that of, is uh, the most important detail yes. of that dick swinging exchange <laughs> is he was this close to winning a student Pulitzer. Is and I was like, thing? is that a. Yeah, is that a national thing, or was it just for this or urban you, legend you? Is that just something you get to meet the dean? It's just a piece of construction <laughs> paper that says, great job on it, in crayon. Yeah. He keeps on acting like his job is to be a journalist. Yeah, it's, it's like, well, no, you're majoring in that at school. <laughs> right, yeah, you're not getting paid diddly squat yet. Do you, you know did, who reads this paper? Students at this college. Yeah. <laughs> Five people. <laughs> Tops. Yeah, That's no the other thing that shit. with students at this college. When the woman is listening to the radio station, I was like, how far is the reach? Because yeah. she appears to be like out in the mountains somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, Jesus, our signal barely got off campus. You had to listen to web streams. <laughs> yeah, and just think about how weird that is. You're li- like, you could... In this world, you could you could be like a creep listening to this sex show yeah, done by a college student. Oh, big oh, dude, time. that's half where, hey, can you tell that blowjob story again? <laughs> Is there going to be like a best of week at some point again? <laughs> Okay. No, it's God. just this line of parked cars on the side of the road <laughs> starting at where the broadcast signal hits. It's all these middle-aged, lonely motherfuckers <laughs> honking jacking their- off to Tara Reid's sex show. Honking yes. their horns for everyone to move up when the next guy gets there. It's like, dude, I'm outside of the way of the signal. Don't be a dick, bro. Don't hog it. Ho- Fuck, dude, don't make me double park. Don't ma- I'll do it. Don't make God, me do it. God damn it, Jerry. Just drive to the front. <laughs> just drive to the front. Hey, no cutting. <laughs> He's honking off. <laughs> but then the tables are turned once again in this conversation because in comes Joshua Jackson. Oh. <laughs> playing Damon Brooks, nice. and he's like, these "Oh, names, yeah, because it's it's fucking late nineties garbage screenplays. They all yeah. have awful names, and everybody's wearing Old Navy." <laughs> uh, and he's like, "Oh, 
oh yeah, that urban legend, that's fucking baby shit. How about this one that happened right on campus? Oh, right. So he proceeds to tell this story about how there was like a massacre at this frat house or some shit, and the college covered it up, and he's having a big party at his frat house to honor said massacre or some shit. Is that sure. Mickey Stern's party? <laughs> no, not no, Mickey Stern's the, party, unfortunately. The, the Stanley Hall massacre. Thank you. It comes up a bunch, folks. <laughs> That's right. It's the Stan Lee Hall massacre. I went into Hall H in Mar- uh, in, at San Diego Comic Con and killed 40 people, Marvel. <laughs> Excelsior, you're dead. So I was smoking a joint with a talking axe. <laughs> <laughs> I decided, he told me to kill everyone. Really? I was just planning to go on in there and slay him with some cool movie news. <laughs> well, and you know, now the enemies, they know that they're going to get slayed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, well it's something he says something about like if you go to the front door of this abandoned building yeah. say something three times blah 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 so Rebecca Gayhart and Alicia Witt go to the frat house to do this sure and then like Joshua Jackson pops up yeah and or maybe this is where he pops up maybe yeah. someone else tells that story and maybe Michael Rosenbaum again yeah just showing showing off I a bit I think Jackson's in the first scene too. is he I, 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 it doesn't I, matter I he but pops up here people. everyone's white guess what everybody's yeah, white yeah, it's hard to keep that's track of who's who. well it is Maine <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh and so he strolls up with his fucking bleach blonde hair no thank you dude wow it's disgusting <laughs> What it's are we be- doing? It looks like he's about to fucking take a ride with Bruce Willis in the fifth element, dude. Keep <laughs> it out of my movie. It's so terrible. Um, and so he, yeah, he tells them about the party or whatever, and they're like, oh, you have this party to honor this horrible event in our school's history? Okay. Uh, so we cut to urban legend class. It's a <laughs> class. Right. And like the thing of it is, if it's like, if this is like a, I don't know, like if it's like a, a humanities, you know, 101 history of like folklore, maybe we're talking about Hansel and Gretel and we're getting to this class. Right. That, that's what I was thinking, too. Like yeah. the urban legend part is it's just part of the syllabus. It's, it's like two weeks top. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's got to be 20 minutes. Are you kidding me? I'm paying for this. <laughs> I'm paying a lot. I'm paying like a thousand dollars to sit in this room. And it's at the end of the semester. <laughs> yeah. You build up to it. Modern right. urban legend. Legends, that's the last and week. You can listen or you could use it as a silent study. Yes. <laughs> exactly. You could just say, I don't need this. That's fine. I'll just go on like literally the internet. Oh, uh, uh, pop rocks. Okay. Yeah. Fuck you. Dude, listen, <laughs> when you're trying to fill a syllabus, man, sometimes those, the back end of that semester, it's like, uh. <laughs> Isn't it funny as you're, as an adult, uh, a crippled with student loan debt when you remember back yeah. when people wanted to do more work in class right. and you and they would always be like but we're paying for this like Puh, for shit whatever man <laughs> no i'm, I'm pay- hung I'm- over i'm hanging out <laughs> exactly dude. i'm paying i'm paying to hang out <laughs> that's what i'm still paying off hanging out <laughs> i don't know that i ever heard anyone say oh there that. would be some yeah they'd be like oh like we should do more blah 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 come on and they were like come on man don't be a square well, man you were, we're a, hanging out you were a lit major right or, yeah or was it creative writing creative writing yeah yeah so that's that you know that you get you get those types of people yeah yeah, yeah. We, we, had, had we had lazy ass people we had lazy people coupled with people who were like quentin tarantino is uh, the best filmmaker ever uh, right? uh, uh, so yeah, I never experienced that, but it's obnoxious sounding. But I, that's who I would be in this urban legend class. I'm like, dude, I'm spending nine hundred dollars today to sit in this room, Robert Anglin. You better teach me something that's at all worthwhile. All right, so this is Professor Freddy talking. Yes, and I feel this scene—they just played this scene as the trailer. Yes, like this scene was all over this trailer because that's how you're selling this movie, everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, oh. Freddy well, Krueger is in this horror movie. Yeah, you let his monologue carry over cut-in scenes of somebody yeah. running from something but or what somebody I, saying, like, oh, it's an urban legend. Yes, <laughs> a bunch of times. Oh, We're told, by the way, legend. that, like, uh, like winter is coming because, like, Joshua <laughs> Jackson at one point says, like, oh, he's going skiing or yeah. snowboarding. It's got to be snowboarding. Um, well, they are in Winterfell. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, due to Game of Thrones University, <laughs> Winterfell Dude, College. It's coming. I bet you someone's oh. working on that right now. Oh, there's definitely some class where it's like, oh, you know, there's a lot like Game of Thrones, guys. If there are people who are dumb enough to think that Donald Trump would open a school to teach them good business things, <laughs> yeah. there could be people who would enroll in a fucking Game of Thrones college. Which is ridiculous because we all know you should go to Glen Cook U. 
He wrote another fantasy series uh, uh, called um, The Black Company, which is pretty good. Somewhere someone's laughing. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> but what's weird is so we're clearly in the middle of a semester. Sure. And he's like going on and on and on about like, you may have heard this story, this, that, and the other thing. And he has the line, uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call an urban legend. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's the class. That's the thing. Oh. <laughs> and like you're talking to a bunch of fucking like 19, 20 year old kids. They've heard that before. And this is what we call mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Just brilliant. Brilliant. I'm sorry for the last couple of weeks. I've just gotten, you know, with the divorce from Janie and, uh, you know, I've had I've had to vent a little bit. Now let's now let's start the show. Dude, it's like fucking mid November. He's been ranting about that rotten ex wife. Is this gonna be on the final or Well, she was a legendary you know what. <laughs> Can't say it on a liberal college campus. They'll crucify me. I'll uh, tell you this. If she thinks she's getting the Cadillac, <laughs> she'll become an urban legend. <laughs> I will look, look at her back. They'll look at her back. They'll find me in there with an axe. I'm gonna shove pop rocks and soda down her fucking throat if she tries to take my dog. This <laughs> professor gets arrested during class. <laughs> so, uh, but he's telling the story. He's telling the the story about the babysitter uh, and that the calls are coming from inside the house, right? And he kind of frames it without any kind of education. He's like, and you know, that's what this is. This is all about. People trying to protect their children, and I'm like, what are we talking about? Because like the pop rocks thing isn't that the, the no none of the the dog in the microwave is not that. It's just like don't put a dog in a microwave. I guess like I don't I don't know what the not every one of these teaches is a lesson. The, is that one that's for real? What? Yeah, that's a, that's a, a dog in a microwave. So an old lady drying a dog in a microwave. This yes. reference oh. later in this. Yes. Yeah, it's like, film. oh, my snuffles got all wet in the rain. I'll dry them off fast. And the microwave, yeah. and she explodes. Oh, no, no, her brain's just Swiss cheese. <laughs> also featured in the horror anthology film The Willies. Oh, really? Yeah. So I guess it is a urban legend. It's Absolutely. an actual one. Absolutely. That movie, I think, uh, has a cameo by the dude who played Donkey Lips. Wow, it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> dude, we're talking about urban legend. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can. Is he in the trailer? Like, People, people are going to come. They see Donkey Lips. <laughs> no, I think this, this was pre-Salute Your Shorts. I remember oh. him being on the... Michael Bauer is his name? Bowen? Uh, something sounds like that. right. He, he's mm. on the back of like the VHS cover. Oh. I think... um, What's his name there? Samwise Gamgee is also in that movie. Maybe uh, Sean Astin? Yes. Maybe they only released it after Donkey Lips became a thing. <laughs> oh, right. They just shelved it. It was like, someday somebody will be even minorly famous. <laughs> What? Featuring Donkey Lips. <laughs> I never, I, I'd have never heard of a movie called Rudy. What? No, salute your sorts. <laughs> Put Donkey Lips on there. So he's he's fucking not Rudy famous. He's goddamn Nickelodeon famous. <laughs> That's how you get asses in the seats. You get Donkey Lips in there. <laughs> uh, anybody got a sleazy horror movie starring Melissa Joan Hart? I'll wait. I've been <laughs> trying to make Sam work for years. <laughs> so he's like, I have a demonstration to waste everyone's time. Dude, you, he is fucking watching the clock with this lecture. And the thing is, like, both Rosenbaum and Josh Jackson are, like, talking out in class. Like, of course you would. This is bullshit. Yes. This is absolute. <laughs> you can't control this class because no one respects you. Why is this also a massive seminar? There's like yes. 200 kids in this room. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? Um, so he's like, if I want to come up I'll, and indulge me here. And uh, Rebecca Gayhart goes up. As she gets up, did anyone else catch this? It's, 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 it, it places this moment, movie in a moment in time. Oh. What? Josh Jackson being a class clown. Ooh. Rebecca Gayhart stands up and he goes, yeah, baby. Yeah. Yes, there Daddy. is a fucking Austin Powers thing. Ooh. Oh, it sucks. And <laughs> I spoop myself. <laughs> but dude, it's enough of a it's enough of a ref that it made the fucking IMDB movie no, connection. Oh, did it? no. It's just Austin Powers Man of Mystery Ew. right there. Gross. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, just a perfectly timed yeah, baby. And like she he's like, Well, uh, you want to try some pop rocks? And she eats them and it's like 
Would you like to wash it down with an ice cold Pepsi beverage? Dude, the way that this <laughs> shot is framed, this pristine yeah. Pepsi can, when he extends his arm yeah. fully to give her the soda, that can of delicious ice cold mm. Pepsi is right in the middle of the frame. It's glistening. Jenny, uh, Jenny liked to drink her Pop Rocks this way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know what? You know what? Just get off my stage. Get it off. <laughs> The funny thing is, though, I'd always heard this one as Pop Rocks and Coke specifically. Oh, oh no, nope, it's Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> Today it's Pepsi. <laughs> he should have said to her, do you want to take the Pepsi challenge? Oh, oh nice. Yeah. That would have been pretty cool. Uh, but so she won't drink it because, like, oh, why? Did you hear an urban legend? And everyone applauds. <laughs> he did that's, it. That's the name of the class. <laughs> he said the thing. <laughs> You all get A's. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Actually, that's why this is in a huge lecture hall, because the demand of all these college kids being like, oh, this class is a joke. Of course I have to register for this. What can we possibly do here? I watched my cousin Vinny in a class, and I was like, you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Law and film. Sure. Uh, oh, man. Those were those weird adjunct classes yes, that weren't yeah. real classes. They were like fake film classes yeah. where like our actual like film studies professors would be like, well, don't take those. Well, well, you're lucky because these days it's probably like find me guilty or something. Oh, wow. Oh, by board. the way, you paid $900 to watch my cousin Vinny. <laughs> no, I paid $900 to graduate because I needed that. I needed anything uh, in my last semester. But so uh, she won't do it. And he's like, well, that was an urban legend, ladies and gentlemen. I think Josh Jackson actually does do it. And like, Oh, he, he absolutely does. He does a class clown moment. He is. So funny. Yes. <laughs> He's so funny. And I'm not talking about Joshua Jackson, the actor. No, no. I'm talking about Damon Brooks, the character. Oh, this Damon guy's a real cut up. He's the living end. <laughs> My Damon question Brooks. He's both him and Rebecca Gayhart are both in Scream 2. As uh, oh. Josh Jackson is in that that sequel class, which is almost as bad as Urban Legend class. Yes. Right. But you could almost imagine it as a real class. Yeah. The, it's a classroom. It's like 20 kids in there. But and I think, and it's very no, clear, like, after we've done all the work for the day, we're just going to rattle off. Well, we're going to rag about sequels for a little bit. Well, that's the thing, right? Yeah. It's a film class yeah, where they just happen to be talking about sequels in a hip, snappy, snap way. This is a class devoted to the urban legend. But here's my question. So... He's at the Scream University, wherever that is, uh, whatever fake university oh, that yeah, is. Oh, I know what you're doing. He he goes, <laughs> he, you know, he, he, know what you're he tells doing. a bunch of Here jokes, yep. and he's like, oh, man, there's a murderer on that campus. I got to hightail it, yep. and I could be the fun. You know, I, I don't have to worry about Jamie Kennedy stealing, stealing my thunder. Oh, sure. I'm going to frost my tips. I'm going to be a fucking legend at Pendleton University. Oh, I, urban I, legend. I reinvented myself when I got to college. That did not work. I got to go to another college <laughs> yeah, and try yeah. it again. <laughs> Sequels, did, um, did, sequels didn't work. I got to go for Urban Legends, man. Where did uh, Pacey go to college? Does anybody remember? I, don't, I do not remember. I checked oh. out before that happened. Oh, all right. Well, well you know we'll what's the best? Back to that. What I kind of like about uh, uh, high school stuff and college. But this is what I kind of like about high school stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> I say that. They, they keep getting young. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but like in, in TV shows wherein uh, it starts out in high school and they go to college. Yep. By, they do like a season and a half of college, and then everyone gets bored of it. Everyone's yep, like, yep. then like, then it's like, oh, uh, everyone kind of got jobs and did stuff, and like, everyone's- yeah. Or someone dropped out. Like yeah. that's what they did with Modern Family. They had like the oldest daughter go to college, and then it was like, oh, uh, no, she was dumb and got kicked out, and so she could like remain on the show forever and ever. <laughs> Seriously, that thing's in like its fucking tenth year. I that think it's Jesus its final one. But insane. Lord, right? so the next murder is Josh Jackson. Um, Alicia. Oh, at this point, they find out that oh my god, this woman was killed oh, in right. an urban legend way. Alicia Witt's very upset. Uh, Josh Jackson, and like she's hanging out with Joshua Jackson, even though she clearly hates his guts. Like, and he keeps popping up, and then he's like. Hey, if you we want a shoulder to cry on, babe, you can come out and I'll drive you out. We'll talk about it. I, I'm a pretty good listener. And, like, she falls for it. She gets in his car. Yep. And, like, very quickly she finds out what this guy's motivation is. He's a scumbag. He's lying. She's like, you know what, dude? She punches him in the face. She's like, forget it, man. Let, drive me back to campus. We, th this was a waste of time. He's like, all right, I got to go. I got to go take a piss. He takes a monster piss. Did you hear the the audio work on this thing? <laughs> this was like that Adam Sandler bit, the longest pee. It's, it's just like, ah, oh, man, didn't work out. It, was, it, it, it sounded like the waterfalls in the beach. <laughs> Great A meat piss. It's like chunky style. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So, it's like a Campbell's soup. 
You know, the chunky ones. Yeah. Uh, the you, gumbo. You're, the ones that football players eat. Uh, that's right. And uh, the mom's like, oh, it makes us piss so nice. <laughs> Chowder. Uh, you're mm. totally neglecting to mention mm. the worst joke this oh, movie no. attempts to pull off. It's like when they're leaving the parking lot of the college to like go for a drive. This is after, by the way, we've been introduced to Loretta Devine as oh. the only campus police officer and John Neville as the dean. And the only black person in a six-mile radius. Clearly. Absolutely. Um, so they like let them know like what happened to this woman or whatever. So they go for this drive. They're pulling out of the parking lot, and Joshua Jackson like goes to like start the car or whatever. And fucking Paula Cole, I don't want to wait, uh. it comes on. And he like turns it off, like, ooh, like he turns it off. <sighs> Dude. I almost threw up. It's like, a bad one. It's so who bad. Who is that for? Like you know, like clearly, you know it's, who that's for? I know. <laughs> but come on, you, <laughs> no, they can't be reasoned with. <laughs> Don't for, stop. Stop them, trying to do it. Them WB kids, man. Mm-hmm. That's that's who that was. I mean, for. like that song was huge. That show was huge. Like clearly, you're not not thinking about that in the '90s when he's on screen. But like, even as the actor, can you be like, can we not do that? Well, like, here's hey, what I'm doing a movie here. Can we not do that? My <laughs> wife asked this, and to, I think uh, do a movie. Here. I think this is what it is, though. I don't think he knew because oh. all it is when you see him, yeah. it's like he turns on the radio, and I think in the script, it's like um, they hear a sexy. <laughs> they hear a bad song, right. and he turns it off, and then like in post production, they were like, you know, it'd be funny. <laughs> If we made this Dawson's Creek joke, but this also adds to like it wants to be this self referential, yes, like sure. totally introverted scream ripoff thing. Yeah, then there's another one later but, in the movie, too. But that hinges so heavily on anybody giving a shit about <laughs> urban legends. <laughs> like the f- scream, it made sense. People give a shit about horror movies. Yeah. Urban legend? Are you well, fucking no, serious? I mean, maybe it's like for those those of us out there who is ob- who are obsessed with like that those uh, books, like scary stories to tell in the dark, right. and weird New Jersey or whatever else. Thirteen oh, yeah. year olds, yes. All of those <laughs> both of those books are about like pumping stomachs. All <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, right, so he's taking a leak and she's getting like pissed off or whatever, and so he's pissed off. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Bad choice of words there. Uh, and as he's like finishing up, mm-hmm. someone wraps a rope around his neck and starts doing it to him. And again, like if I, you know, you get a physics problem, like it's got, you've got um, a guy who weighs probably like 160 pounds. Yeah. It's like five foot nine, whatever. You got Rebecca Gayhart, who's five foot one, 90 <laughs> pounds, right. is able to put a noose around this dude's neck and is pulling him up like he's a rag doll. Yeah, what are we He goes up about? like 60 and feet. <laughs> this is this, so a hanging yes. is an urban legend now? Well, well, no. So this is so she she doesn't pull him up sixty feet. She gets him just so like he's right above the car, it's like fifteen feet. Sure. And the whole thing is like his toes like just touching the roof. Mm-hmm. But like if she moves the car, he's gonna hang. So he's yelling like, "Don't move the car" or whatever. But then so like Rebecca Gayhart in this fucking snow jumper. <laughs> Like gets on the the windshield and freaks out Alicia Witt and she starts driving away um, and the rope is attached mm-hmm. to the bumper so as right. she drives away he gets hung. She... What it should have been was she just keeps driving, he goes up <laughs> all the way to a branch and gets fucking decapitated. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so, but we see yeah. some like bullshit urban legend book later that has an illustration of like. She drove a, a man to death. <laughs> of like a dude hanging above a car. So apparently at some point, at least according to this movie, that's also an urban well, legend. Well, it I happened on a night so. quite like tonight. Wait, oh, right. That's yeah, what I heard. A, a night just like tonight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. they were recording a podcast in a car. A podcast just like this podcast? Yes, just like this one, Eric. <laughs> so, um, we're going to die today. <laughs> so uh, she goes to get uh, L- Loretta Devine, who is playing this character named Reese, who's campus security. She comes back, and it's one of those favorite things where, like, somebody tells an insanely fucked up story. Like, I saw a fucking alien, and he, he killed my mom, and my mom's actually missing. This is really scary. And they come back, and they find, like, one can of beer, and they're like... <laughs> Well, I think we could sleep it off about that alien that killed your mom, right? Mister. And it's like, dude, but the person is missing. Like, why would? What kind of al- What are you? What is your experience with alcohol that you think that I would make this shit up? <laughs> yeah, I've been really drunk, and yeah. I've never <laughs> once made up like this person attached my friend to the fucking bumper of my car, and I hung him by accident. <laughs> And who is now definitely not around anymore. Have you been drinking? No. Well, 10 beers. (laughs) 
but they they play it off because it's like, oh, well, everybody knows that Joshua Jackson had plans to go to Killington. Oh, college uh, kids go missing all the time. <laughs> Dude, the dean at one point is like, he's like talking to Loretta Devine, and he's like, you're being ridiculous, officer. It's the weekend. Of course no one's here. And I don't know if it's because we went to a state school or not, but like our dean wasn't British. <laughs> yeah, true. I would say no one in our faculty the, the, the idea of a British A prestigious dean And he's like it's the weekend It's like dude take all of this down Three notches this is, By yes. the way this is why like if we had a British dean We would have yeah. been, been six, six, We would have had success Out of college Yes we would have we would have been something. The great- you know? <laughs> now you know we did we went to a state school, Chris. You're laughing, but I, we I have am. failures as men. <laughs> More or less. Yeah, we just had some American dean, you know. Yeah, exactly. If we had a British dean, things might have gone a little better. Or we sudden. could have been killed by the urban legend slayer. Yeah, that's knows. fine too. <laughs> uh, I will make men out of you. We hate movies, boys. It is I, your British dean. Yeah. Played by John Reese Davies <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Slide oh, there. Man. I'm it's, Dean Islamophobe. Uh, that's you know what? Now I'm making a movie. It's called Fat University. It's yeah. us four. And you got John Reese Davies. <laughs> Hold on a second. It's like the admissions exam. Like you gotta weigh in. <laughs> I have to eat oh, this much I don't lard. think so. <laughs> You're not fat enough at all. Take that to Husky University. <laughs> I'm the dean of fat university. <laughs> Deep fry all of this. <laughs> I mean, and it's, and this movie writes itself. The dining I mean, hall's got a river of gravy. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's it's exactly. a river of gravy. <laughs> One of the boys drowns in there. And it's, <laughs> it starts off the investigation. Oh, and nice. The- yeah. Oh, so there's also a murder on this game? Yeah, 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 people well, are dying. I, I, it's mostly of natural causes. <laughs> I would hope there's like a Willy Wonka-esque gravi- gravy factory in back. Yes. Oh, those rowdy boys of Sausage House. <laughs> <laughs> they did a panty raid last night. <laughs> sausage House. It's I the weekend. <laughs> it's a sausage party. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh. Can we talk about Alicia Witt's uh, tragic roommate situation? Yes, we definitely need to. There's one scene at some point uh, in the film. She goes into her dorm room, uh, and there is her roommate having wild sex just out in the open, door unlocked, no sock on the fucking knob. This would solve her problems, is institute that sock position thing. That's a universal signal. But also, I think like, that's been around since like the fun. It's an urban legend. Oh, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> but but even that, like, she's like, could you turn off the light? And they continue having rowdy sex, dude. As this girl goes to sleep, like it's that's disgusting. not how that shit works. It's like you, like the one of the roommates, like, the cool roommate, roommate having sex, knocks the nerd out, and is like sleeping the fucking the, but the mess hall. What we are privy to is like she opens the door, and it's just like. Turn the light off. <laughs> like that guy does not stop thrusting through yes. this whole seat. She's like putting her fucking disc man on, <laughs> trying to go to sleep. She's got her fucking busted two dollar headphones from Radio Shack. <laughs> She's like putting on like it's like a Slipknot album by accident. She's like, oh fuck, <laughs> that's not gonna be able to. Sleep. She has to like go through her CDs, find the, find Crash into Me. Well, you know what, what I mean? I, and that's the move. I, I what you do is you go to another roommate's room, be like, yep, oh, they're having sex. Sorry, you don't sleep. Sleep in that room, it becomes a situation. Mm-hmm. It's like an almost threesome at that or, point. You know, it's like because a, how are go, they performing? Unless from, that's the move. That's, that's their part thing. It. It's part of it. <laughs> you go for a walk for like an hour. Yeah, or like exactly. Um, this roommate is played by Danielle Harris from mm-hmm. uh, four separate Halloween films. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, five, stuff. six, zombie one and or four, five, and zombie one and two. Uh, previous episode as well. Um, Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. She plays Ooh. one of the kids. Does she really? I don't Almost remember positive. that at all. Yeah, wow. she does. That's crazy. A great mm-hmm. film. That's, That's great. crazy. It's a great film. Uh, so <laughs> I actually uh, like that movie. <laughs> it's a good I do, movie. I do. So it's, I do fun. Too. it's fun. Right. Um, it's but fun. she's a goth. We find out in later scenes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. She's painted half her half the room black. She's all. And like, the thing is, like, this is like maybe the the fourth goth in film history. Period. <laughs> and like, she's a fucking nightmare because she's like a a bad nasty person. <laughs> B she's on lithium. Well, yeah. this is pre Ethan Supply and yeah. Butterfly Effect. <laughs> yes. Yeah, correct. you're right. Okay. So, She's listening to Stabbing Westward. Stabbing Westward, Westward which yet is again, cannot t- escape it. Sorry, we're going to take back your goth card. 
<laughs> yes, seriously. Yeah, what is much. that about? I mean, I understand dipping your toes in it, but mm. <laughs> at least you gotta even it out with some Bauhaus. You oh, gotta like, yeah. Well, of course, that's the that's the bottom line. You need that. That's the foundation of which the house is built. <laughs> or I don't know. How about some like sensual goth fucking? You've got some cure on, maybe. Oh, yeah, right, definitely. Uh, also, we painting your exactly. dorm room. Exactly. What is that about? Come on. You no. can't do that. You That's just no. annoying. It's against the rules. By the way, Ethan, That's your a, RA is not going to pass you, dude. Little dollar signs. Every time you look at each little painting you did there. By the way, try to paint over fucking black paint like that. That's at least like six coats of that eggshell white, brother. It's awesome. There's another scene with the roommate kind of earlier on in the film where like uh, uh, Alicia Witt wants to make a phone call and like <laughs> Danielle Harris is uh, like on some goth chat thing and she picks up the phone. Uh oh, dial up modem problems. <laughs> uh, Remember that? Yeah, I do. I that's do. actually for kids now. That's an urban legend. <laughs> <laughs> it used to go on the internet and your mom could knock you off by trying to call your grandpa. Whoa, horror. <laughs> Total horror. Um, but so. This is kind of culminating in uh, uh, Alicia Witt is like, oh, man, something's going on with these urban legends. Right. So she goes to the library, picks out the big book of urban legends, which I guarantee you, Robert England on the board is like, well, we need at least 10 of those for my class. Uh, I mean, look how big the seminar is going to be. Can we get this on sale at the bookstore? What, folks? People, it's Urban Legend I, 101. I don't know what to tell you. There's not a soft cover out there. You need to buy these hard cover. And well, Steve wasn't joking, by the way. The book is literally tied. The Encyclopedia of Urban Legends. Well, look, I'm sorry. Well, uh, we won't need Moby Dick then. I'm sorry. Lit is canceled. <laughs> what what <laughs> pays the bills here is Urban Legend. I just started the class. I was getting the divorce stuff out. <laughs> Don't you understand? How many times do I have to tell you I'm going through a horrid <laughs> divorce? <laughs> so uh, she gets us out with Rebecca Gayhart. Uh, and she, she runs into Tara Reed in yes. the library, which that's the funniest part of the movie. Well, Tara, Tara Reed's like, I'm just... <laughs> she's like, well, because she's a sex maniac in air quotes. Oh, oh, she's much. sex crazy. She's like, I'm checking out the Kama Sutra. Isn't this fun? Goodbye, movie. She's like, oh, look at all these pictures. Do you think whoever I'm fucking would like to take a look at oh, some Michael, of these? Michael Rosenbaum. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, on what planet? Um, <laughs> so, uh, but she winds up going to record Rebecca Gayhart. She, she explains, by the way, I did actually know that this girl that got killed in the beginning of the movie, we went to the same school, and here's what happened. It was on a night, quite like tonight. Oh, oh yeah. Did you ever hear of the, uh, the, did you ever hear about the gang initiation, urban legend? Right. Right, yeah, that's where they stab you in the street. <laughs> Oh, now is it different? No, it's a, you have to pay 600 bucks. It's really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought that was the knockout game. Oh, the knockout yeah. game. Oh, yeah, yeah that's another urban legend. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, actually, now I'm thinking about an actual Bronx urban legend. Do you guys have this? I, I, uh, Did you have which this? was um, uh, the, the, the Clover- haunted provolone. <laughs> <laughs> the Cloverfield? Oh, shit. No, the, the Cloverfield. If you um, don't buy stickers from this guy that comes around the school trying to sell you stickers, <laughs> what? do you know why? Because they have LSD on them. Oh, yeah. And if you touch yep. the sticker, now you're having an acid trip for six days or something. Oh, no, it wasn't touch it or anything like that. Yeah. I, I have heard of the don't take stickers I, from I, strangers. I have not heard of this. Yeah. It's just some guy wandering around <laughs> wasting his drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Thousands of dollars pasting I, LSD. I'm actually a millionaire. I just like getting kids high. <laughs> well, that was like, I saw somebody uh, was like making fun of some tweet that was going around. Uh, uh, it was like a news headline that said like, uh, parents, this Halloween, oh, yeah. be careful of people giving out edibles to your kids. And somebody was like, why the fuck would I waste my drugs on that? <laughs> exactly. What are you talking about? Dude, I get a package of those gummy bears. They are in-house, brother. <laughs> How don't you get one one of these people to bite into an apple with the razor blade in, yeah. in this movie? Oh, that's, a, good, maybe, oh, that's a great oh, point. You got to save yeah. something for the sequel, Chris. Gotta save I th- watched the sequel. <laughs> they don't do shit like oh, that's that. That's a bummer. But to Ape Scream 2 even more, that takes place at a film school, if I remember oh, properly. Yes, it does. <laughs> and they're all vying for the Hitchcock Award. Boof. No. Yes. Yeah, boo. <laughs> Spooky stupid. <laughs> yes, the leading student at Fat University will get the Hitchcock Award. <laughs> oh, oh, Gerard Depardieu, French teacher. Oh, there he is. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Steven Seagal, P.E. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to sit around today and do jack shit. 
That's have you ever sat on a couch? <laughs> Listen, you don't want to you don't lose weight. You want to get kicked out of school? Hey man, this is Couch Sit 101. <laughs> Take a load off. I'm not moving a muscle. <laughs> We're surfing sure the web today. <laughs> so, uh, but she's like, "Oh, by the way, uh, you ever hear the gang initiation thing? It's when you flash your brights. Uh, if, if you see somebody uh, with the, without their brights on, if you flash them, then they will go and kill you because that's part of a gang right, initiation. Right? They pull a Yui and then they run you off the road. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, Alicia Witt and this girl are driving around in high school. It seems." And are doing are flashing their brights at this person, and they run this guy off the road and kill him. Like they chase him for like miles. <laughs> yeah. Dude, they like murder this, this guy. The way that they they film this flashback, and like Alicia Wood is narrating it, and they show the woman from the beginning of the movie who was murdered, and she is driving this car, and like it's like a gag out of The Simpsons, like <laughs> someone misremembering something wrong, because she's driving, she's behind the wheel, and she's like laughing maniacally, like ramming this dude. You know, I've heard of MS thirteen. But Ms. Thirteen, <laughs> she's young. She's, yeah. she's like in high school. She's probably thirteen years old. But like, uh-huh. and then <laughs> they kill this guy. All I can say is, thank goodness these two girls are white. Yep, that's exactly because they, they show them with the cops. Like the cops let us off light with probation. Like, yeah, you don't fucking say. Yeah, they got like three months probation. Wow, <laughs> for killing someone. <laughs> we didn't even have to meet their his family. It, it was really great. <laughs> So that's her backstory. Uh, the next urban legend is uh, yes, um, uh, Daniel Harris is on the phone on the computer, clickety clack, clickety clacking uh, in a chat room called Goth for Goth. By the way, Eric, yeah. did you get on that or not? Uh, no, I don't think I ever. No, oh, shit, I should have though. Now, <laughs> and, and as a goth, were you like really just hitting a lot of lithium? <laughs> no, I couldn't find any. No, oh, the, okay. the lithium is because she's got brain problems. Because oh, she's right. so fucked yeah. up. The only, Why would so, the only way somebody would be a goth, right? <laughs> of course. The yeah. only lithium I ever got was Nirvana. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, nice. Uh, yeah, I was using air quotes by the way. That whole mental illness. No, you were me. actually like deriding people. <laughs> no, I was weird. not. Steve was holding up a sign like Looney Tunes that just said "fuck these people." <laughs> <laughs> No. no, no, it's ridiculous. The portrayal is 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 not correct. Not it's great. not good. It's not nice. Not uh, so she's wait. Like, who's sorry? But who's a more legitimate goth in cinema? Her in this movie or Ethan Suplee and Butterfly Effect? Oh I think, God, Ethan Suplee seemed like a cool hang at least. Yeah, you know what he I mean? didn't seem like a good enough guy. This I is like seen that movie in forever. But this is like you know, just because she's goth, she's also like a crank. Yes, and just like constantly angry at everything. So she's like, you know, Alicia Witt's like, hey, get off the internet. She gives her the finger. And she's like emailing or chatting with some guy. She's like, she's in this goth chat room. Like, hey, I guess it's like a, a local goth chat room. Because she's like, yeah. who in the school wants to fuck right now? And yeah, it's I like, think it's like campus only or Whoa. something. Oh, wait, campus goth fucks? No, this does not a thing. <laughs> exactly, <Yeah. laughs> like localized goth and, fucking. And having like, <laughs> one of those links, it's like, oh, there, there's somebody who wants to fuck you three miles away. That's Don't click that link. Urban legend. <laughs> no one wants to fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, it's four other people, yes. and they're always on there, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. Wait, uh, did I fuck you already? Did I? <laughs> yeah, all right. No, ne- you keep changing your screen name, Barry, and it's just you every time. It's the same guys that are lining up for Tara Reid in the cars. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I wish there was a way we could sit in our cars and be on the internet at the same time. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> so um, she's like, hey, who wants to fuck? And she starts chatting with somebody, and the person's like, the guy, it's actually Rebecca Gayhart, spoiler alert, is like, hey, I'm really close to you. She's like, oh, cool. Where are you? And he's like, in your room. Well, it's it's so funny because it's like, where are you? She leaves to like go to the bathroom or yeah. something, and then she comes back in the room, and it's like, your room. Oh. And she gets attacked. And then this is the dumbest thing in the movie. In in a movie that's filled with dumb set pieces. Sure. Alicia Witt walks back in and it's like, oh, she's getting fucked again. And it's like her being strangled. Yes. So she puts, you know, headphones on again and lays down and Crash like Crash into me. <laughs> <laughs> You're the king of the <laughs> So much to say. <laughs> oh, the little ants are marching. Oh, oh, help me, please. They're under the table and dreaming. Help me. <laughs> oh, Lord Almighty. Um, but um, so she wakes up the next morning and it's like, I thought at first 
the killer put her in one of those like vacuum seal fetish bags. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> Featured most recently in this new uh, Girl in the Spider's Web. Movie. Oh, okay. It's like you put on like a gimp type suit, sure. and then a, a vacuum thing oh, sucks all, right. all the sucks, whatever sucks out of you. The what? I got one in my closet. I'll show you guys afterward <laughs> on recording. I, I, you know what? I'm just gonna put this out there. That Girl in the Spider's Web might be one of the stupidest movies put out this year. I don't know. I'm kind of interested. Uh, I'll see. Uh, I like Claire Foy. The problem is that trailer tells you literally everything. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing left to that movie. Is it? It's about like evil twins kind of a thing, right? I think it's just like she's like a foster sister or something that she screwed over. But I'll tell you what, dude. You have a movie where Lakeith Stanfield is fucking sniping people. Yeah, I'm there. All right. We'll see. I'm maybe, I'll be pro- maybe I'll be proven wrong. Um, Prove me wrong, kids. <laughs> <laughs> but so she wakes up, she pulls the covers off her, and it's like she slit her wrist, and yeah. then written in blood is like, bet you wish you turned on the light. Or aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? Oh, is that what it is? Whatever. 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 Uh, so it's it's like this bullshit. She's reporting the crime or whatever to the dean and the only campus police officer on this entire private and university. Not the police. It's insane. Right. Yeah. It's insane. Security guard <laughs> and an admissions official. <laughs> The best part of this whole thing is like they come out like they're wheeling this woman, this dead girl, out on a on a on a gurney. Yeah, and then like this this mean girl is like, you might want want to check her pulse. She always looks that pale. And yeah. I'm like, dude, there's like mean oh, girl, and yep. then pointing at a recently dead person. But, but that is happening all the time. Yes, in this yep. every time somebody dies, somebody makes some catty comment. <laughs> well, yeah, the girl that gets her fucking head cut off. I think uh, Michael it's, Rosenbaum. It's Joshua Jackson. I, I know like, exactly where you're going with like, this. Oh man, you know what I heard? She gives great head. Uh, and then mm. I immediately thought of that film High Tension. Oh boy. <laughs> but no, but oh, then, oh, that's actually. But that scene's exactly the scream. Two, scream one scenes like live her alone and blah blah. blah. Oh right, live her alone. <laughs> uh so it's great because this dean. Nice I guess tact, this- fuck rag. <laughs> This dean, I think, is his motivation is he's concerned about admission numbers for next semester because he's just like, well, of course, you know, stupid child. She she wore white makeup on her face and listened to a bunch of loud industrial music. Clearly, this is a suicide. I she, can I, I'm writing the death certificate right now as dean of the university. And she's like, but Su- what suicide about numbers spiking doesn't hurt admissions no. at all? And she's like, what about? The fucking blood message on the wall. He's like, tip, tip, enough of that. It's the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> they wind up, she winds up uh, hooking up with Jared Leto, and he's like, wow, I smell a story. And like they do this like <sighs> Scooby Doo horseshit, because that's what all the screen movies are. Uh, some Scooby-Doo pretty horseshit. sweet, uh, fascinating library research. Sure. The two of them are teaming up on that because Jared Leto, as he'll remind you in this movie, is just doing his job. Oh, uh, his job. <laughs> so, uh, how do they. Well, this is this is one of the best things ever. Throughout the film, we have some brief encounters with creepy janitor. Oh, sure. Yes. And it's like <laughs> they say something about like, oh, how long? And they're like, hey, uh, creepy janitor, how long have you been working here? And he's like, too long. <laughs> and they're like, yes, okay, creepy janitor. Do you know anything about the Stanley Hall massacre? And he goes, and he's like, I'll tell you one thing: the most popular professor on this campus, that guy who teaches Urban Legends One Hundred and One. <laughs> You might want to look into that guy. And they make their way to Bob Anglin's office. Oh, yes, the the Stanley Hall Massacre. I've got the trailer for (laughs) Avengers Infinity War Part 2. Everybody close their eyes. It it turns out diabetes did it. (laughs) Uh, And so they sneak into Anglin's office, and there they find, like, all the props that the prop department from the (laughs) film was storing someplace. Like, it's like the jacket, there's an axe. Uh, and they all get freaked out. And of course, England like walks in right behind them. And we have to immediately go back to talk to this fucking <laughs> dean and the only security guard once again. And the dean is like, look, all right, all right, England, you're very, very upset. You go outside. And he's like, all, and the, the weird thing is, he's like, well, Mr. Leto, you're off the school paper, mister. <laughs> oh, yeah, he gets him fired. Yeah, and he's like, well, and then he, like, starts, Leto's like, hey, man, the, the school charter says, I'm like, dude, shut up. Dude, any <laughs> fucking student that when you got into, like, a beef with, like, school administration or whatever, and that person brought out the school charter, shut up. I, I was really hoping he was just going to kill himself right there. <laughs> but the no, other- don't take away my baby. <laughs> and then he goes up to, um, 
uh, Alicia Witt is like, and it seems here, mm, yes, looks like you killed someone a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? The way and I'm that- like, dude, this girl just had her roommate like commit suicide at best. Maybe give her a little oh, slack. Wait, wait, Maybe that, a that, tiny bit. That's another urban legend, right? Your roommate kills themselves, and yeah. you get like a B or an A or uh, right? something like that. Oh, right? right. They call that the dead man on campus rule. Right. That that's was that, another urban legend film. Yes. That's, yes. That, that yes. film is based entirely on that one urban legend. <laughs> the urban legend universe. The extended Jeez, universe. believe me, man. My freshman year roommates, I was hoping that clause came into effect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, but it's weird because the way that the dean frames it is so fucking shitty and catty. He's like, "Oh, and you, little Missy, you're on probation. Something that, according to your record that I looked through, you're no stranger to." <laughs> and Jared Leto's got to be like, "What the hell was that about? I smell a story." Also, in this fucking <laughs> interrogation scene is where Robert. They're like, "Well, what about the?" Yeah. What about the jacket? <laughs> what about the rope? And he goes, those are just props that I use in my folklore class. And I was like, that's what you're calling it now? <laughs> exactly. It is Urban Legend 101, friend. If you must know, those were Jannies, and I just made my last <laughs> trip over there to get my jacket, my axe, and no, my dog, okay? This rotten woman never goes anywhere, so try to find me a time in the week when I can go over there when she's not home and get my props. Oh, Just find My me. grandfather's axe, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, only if I had the time to kill you children as <laughs> urban legends. My love in life. <laughs> you know, not enough classes in college had props. <laughs> yeah. You know, like if someone walks in with a carrot top-esque <laughs> fucking suitcase. That's what I want. I would love it, dude. Just some visual aids to well, enhance the, the learning you experience. Fat you fat <laughs> Oh, definitely. They're called this, sandwiches. Yeah, this is a sandwich. You eat it. I, nom, I, nom, I nom, brought nom. it in a bigger sandwich. <laughs> po Boy 101. Oh, yeah. Oh, and uh, the time for your final exam, children. It's a succulent turducken. <laughs> po, boy, po Boy 101. Uh, taught by Paul Perdone. Oh, yes. <laughs> but wait a second. So uh-huh. what, are, what are you studying in this class? Like cooking? Like is it recipes? Or is it how to eat these things? Flavor tasting. <laughs> well, Look, maybe it's, it's different majors. Speed, like you could major. Oh, yeah. So like speed eating. Yeah. You yeah. can major in like being a competitive eater. Mm-hmm. Sure. Taste testing, right? Dying can, early. Fat, fat actor 101, man. You can get, you know, you, that can get you on Saturday Night Live sometimes. You're on the Will Sasso track, young man. <laughs> I'm so proud. So, um, oh, there's, there's swimming. There, well, yeah, there's, right? sw- yeah, the, 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 that, this is just like a fake out. Like she, she goes swimming. Uh, Alicia Witt is, uh, uh, Rebecca Gayhart is swimming and like, Oh my God! The guy, the Parker guy, is there. It just gonna... saunters into this pool in the middle of the day. Alicia Witt like breaks a window and whoops! It was just it was all a misunderstanding. This is when the dean bites it. But this, my favorite part of this whole thing <laughs> is the dean is like, "All right, listen, listen, uh, Loretta Devine. Whatever happens this weekend." We're not calling the police over missing <laughs> students. Or I don't whatever. want to see one ambulance bill. <laughs> no, Just the, a couple murders on campus. We uh, can deal with it. It gets actually really revealed later that what he does is he calls the police and is like, Listen, if you get any 911 calls from campus, just don't show up. Dude, this dude is lucky that he's butchered in this movie because otherwise he's going to jail. Yes. Yeah. How are the cops not to going directly to the campus after they get that phone call? Dude, dude yeah. yeah. Dude, call 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 911 at any time. Like, hey, yeah, um, hi, I work at this uh, office. If you hear any 911 calls, someone's <laughs> pranking you. So for the next 24 hours, just don't come if you hear any 911 calls. I've already told all the operators to block if uh, if, a nine, if if the cops are going to call into here at all. So we're fine. But, like, could you just help me out? Look, any number that comes through your caller ID and it says 555251, all of those are <laughs> campus extensions. Just ignore every last one of them. Also, this is where they're talking because Loretta Devine is now sort of like coming around to this idea that something's not sure. quite right. And she brings back up Joshua Jackson once again. And she's like, this boy is missing. And he's like, no, he's not. no, it's the weekend. I'm going to remind you of that one more time. He's probably off. And this is great. He goes with a girl or a guy or a 
farm animal, whatever. <laughs> yes, my students are fucking chickens. <laughs> Robert Englund's teaching a fucking animals course. <laughs> oh, man, he, he's qualified. <laughs> I bet yes. you, you take that class, right? Yes, I did. Zoo 101. <laughs> yes, yes. Did you not know that we have purge weekends here? <laughs> <laughs> Anything goes. Uh, this Dean, I, I would put my money on having the best death in the movie. Oh, d- easily. It's yeah. fucking awesome. He's like, in, is it a parking garage? It's Where a, the hell is it? Yeah. It's a parking garage. Yeah. And he gets his Achilles cut. Uh, credit to Pet Cemetery, where credit is due. Yeah. Oh, man. Those little critters type moves <laughs> like that. Oof. Uh, and he's Slice. like, and he's like crawling around, <laughs> and someone like uh, the killer um, puts his car into neutral, and it starts rolling towards him, and it it, it rolls over him over the what he called it the tire, whatever the tire you know. spikes. So it's yeah. like the fucking car hits this dude and pushes him down <laughs> onto the tire spikes. It's pretty great, except it's dumb because like. What a convenient location. Yeah, this Dean got this parking spot in, like, aligned perfectly with the wrong side of the exit entrance thing. On the other hand, though, it's the best-known urban legend. Is the it? The guy who got ran over by the car. And no, of course <laughs> not. <laughs> Apparently, th- it Brit is. Dean got run over by his own car. <laughs> it's the weak end. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's like, but it was Saturday. <laughs> Unless Pet Cemetery is an urban legend in and of itself, then no. no. It's funny that you mentioned this, Chris. I, I saw on the Wikipedia, yes. the thing is, they cite the urban legends in the film, and then they give, like, at, you know, the uh, they, I was trying to find the sources they were using. A lot of it was, like, books, and they're giving me fucking ISBN numbers. Oh, Shut Lord. The fuck up. That's where I tune Shut out. Shut the fuck up. But one, one of them, the, the Achilles heel cut was, like, referencing, like, a 1990 newspaper article or something about, like, oh, old people are getting their, their Achilles heels Specifically cut. old people? Yeah, some shit like that in, like, parking lots. Oh. Down at the Kroger's or something. <laughs> what the fuck? What the best detail about this Dean character is revealed in his final shot as he's like, his dead arm is kind of slowly falling towards the ground. You guys notice he's got a fucking Coke fingernail? Oh, nice. And I think it's just a thing where he's like a decrepit old man and it's like, (laughs) if he cuts his own fingernails, his hand might fall off or something. I cut them all, but oh, that last one's just a bridge too far. (laughs) (laughs) Like this dude, he looks like fucking Harvey Keitel. That's how I summon the genie, don't you know? (laughs) I should say in Taxi Driver, by the way, not just Harvey Keitel in general. That professor called you a little chicken wing. (laughs) You, you want your professor talking? The dean. The dean. Yeah, the dean. He called you a little chicken wing. You know what I'm talking about? You like that? Um, <laughs> bravo. Um, the So, like, now we're at this party. It's like the, the, the last movement of the movie, which takes forever, is this big party at Parker's house. And he's, like, holding court. and drink. Now, all, by the way, all of a sudden, Parker's got a dog. I'm like, where did this dog come from? Yep. You got to set that dog up in the first act. Absolutely. He needs to be carrying this thing around all the time. And this is where I'm like... Parker, I'm so glad that this is a bad slasher movie because I know you're going to get it because this, with the cut into this party scene is Parker giving his own dog a fucking, like, beer funnel. Oh, yeah. And dude. everybody's cheering on this dog, and I wanted to burn this fucking house down with the door locked. Am I the only one who also saw a pierced nose on the dog? On the because dog. They, they mention they mentioned legend. piercing the dog oh, earlier man. in the film. Yeah, yeah that, you're right. Look, kill them all. That was just an expression. <laughs> I'm gonna go pierce the dog. <laughs> Let's Let's take my, his shit. I gotta, I gotta spoop my pants. I gotta go pierce the dog. <laughs> it works. <laughs> I think we'll t- this episode will be famous for giving birth to spooping, Eric. Are you That's happy right. about that? That's we, right. We created spooping. <laughs> family uh, friendly. <laughs> Eric's. I am very family friendly, as in I will be nice to your family if I have to see them. Yeah, family friendly like a family from a fucking Rob Zombie movie. <laughs> oh shit, a hellbilly family. <laughs> So um, par- uh, Jared Leto's like, we can't have this party here, man. The killer's around or whatever. And, uh, you know, uh, Michael Rosenbaum gives him a bunch of shit. He's like, You're, you probably did this yourself because you had one big scoop. At one point in this movie, I'm sorry, when, when he gets suspended, when he gets removed from the uh, paper, he's like, he goes up to Alicia Wood. He's like, well, my whole career is ruined now. I'm not going to have enough writing samples to get a good newspaper job. I'm like, this is a school paper. Like, yes. the, it, it's good to write in a school paper if you want to get into journalism. 
you need one of those articles. Like, yes. you're, you're not going to go to the New York fucking Times. Go and like, intern somewhere. Exactly. You, you got the story where you almost won the student Pulitzer. Just use that one. You're, you're, you're coasting. And also, by the way, the only way you get that job is if you're, you know, if you're, you, you have connections. That's the way you get the New York Times internship, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, while this party is going on, mm-hmm. we cut to uh, uh, Reese, our security oh, right. officer, and she's like snooping around an administration building. She runs into creepy janitor for two seconds, but she's made hip to a noise from Robert Englund's office. Oh, uh, and she goes in and she just falls on a pool of blood. <laughs> and then we just cut back to the party. Yep, that's good. Seems like you needed it in there. I mean, this is this movie's like 99 minutes. Yeah, sure. Put and that she in. calls the police, and the cop is like, well, I'm sorry, miss. I would love to. I was I know, just I know on my invisible typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> Jackass. I was told that every call from this entire three-mile radius would be a prank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A homicide <laughs> in progress. <laughs> yeah, right, lady. <laughs> so um, Parker gets... And this is like... We're an hour into this movie, and I'm like, you know, this movie's a lot like that movie Scream that I saw. But we're <laughs> we're avoiding one clear trope, and we, we, we've done a good job so far. Yeah. And then the fucking phone rings, and <laughs> and Michael Rosenbaum picks it up, and this guy, this voice out of nowhere is like, what's your favorite urban legend? And I'm like, come Dude, on, movie. Fuck you, you were there. hard. You were there. You were close. So close. We almost got to the finish line without a direct theft. <laughs> like steal stylistically all yeah. you want, but this is direct theft. <laughs> Wes Craven's like, oh, you know what? Fuck it, man. This movie sucks. <laughs> uh, somewhere around here, Tara Reid has to like run out of the party because she's got to be on the air. Yes, uh, but Michael Rosenbaum gets a call. He's like, you ever hear the? You ever hear the urban legend about the dog in the microwave? Yep. And the dogs in the micro. It's all bloody. Splat city. So during this party, <laughs> yes. she, she runs in there, grabs this dog <laughs> away yep. from its Spud McKenzie-esque drinking habit <laughs> and throws it into a microwave, closes it in a kitchen, which is, by the way, one of the most populated areas of any good party. Sure. That's yeah. where the well, beer is, right? And I mean, she's doing this all in her Iron Man suit with the parka <laughs> over it. <laughs> so Rebecca Gayhart built that parka in a cave <laughs> with a bunch of scraps. Um, and then Rosenbaum gets his own right here. Because he's like, oh, I'm gonna, and it's the same thing from Scream. Like, I'm going to kick you. I got a boyfriend, and he plays football, and he's going to kick the shit out of you. <laughs> uh, and, like, he's so disgusted by what happened to his dog, he runs up a flight of stairs, vomits in a toilet. We have brief toilet cam? Nice. Yeah. Unnecessary. Even grosser Disagree. detail. Toilet cam with a fucking cigarette butt just floating in the water. I think this entire movie should be told from the perspective of a <laughs> toilet bowl. Oh, man, if you like that movie. Uh, no, it's like that movie um, with a time code. It's like a force, a split way, and one is just the toilet. Just like, focus yeah. on the toilet. It's three. just people using the toilet for the entire film. Please it's called the Urban do Legend. Not, do not use that device for Fat Universe. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Exactly. Oh, I've got to take a spoop. <laughs> it's a cheeky situation. It's it's a niche audience, but they're going to come back to the theater uh, every other weekend. Yeah, that's true. Oh, they're it's always the-, the busiest after KFC week. Yikes! Double so, down. So, um, <laughs> re- again, Rebecca Gayhart uh, built like a fucking linebacker. Yeah. Grabs this dude's head, <laughs> rips it back. Throw, throws a beer bong into his mouth. This is after knocking him unconscious, by the way, because yeah, he's tied to the toilet. That's right, she's beating the shit out of this dude. She's and, just fucking slugging people. And uh, she, yeah, she puts Pop Rocks in it. And the thing is, like, oh, yeah, it's the Pop Rocks thing, but it's Pop Rocks and Drano. Like, don't even use the Pop Rocks. Yeah, Drano kills people. Yeah. Save that delicious, delicious candy for another kill. But Drano, yeah, it's yeah, not an urban legend. It's the, just, you know, yeah, Darwinism yeah, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, Pop Rocks. I mean, she has to, you know, give reference to the the canon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. It's well, it's kind a little of little bit. I mean, she's a, she's stretching. I mean, this is like the end of the syllabus. Yeah. I mean, she's really stretching <laughs> for a topic. That that parking garage thing, I'm already off her. I exactly. Mean, she, she's just doing nothing. I was done point. at the hanging. <laughs> <laughs> at the hanging. That's uh, not a thing. And then she goes books it to the other end of campus, starts harassing Tara Reed for 20 minutes. Who's on the air? She's got like a headset so she can like the whole movie she's seen like sauntering around her studio yeah. like with this wireless headset so <laughs> sure. she can like yeah. she doesn't have to be like tied to a mic she can walk around while she's pontificating all this cum chugging advice oh, God. and like <laughs> 
That's what it is. It's that is that is that is what it is. That is most I'm of it. Sorry actually. that we have to say the that. The first time that's she's what it is. she's seen in this fucking movie, she rips the pop guard off a microphone and starts filleting it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. that's yes. what this movie is, gang. I'm not making this up. <laughs> so um, she's this getting, is the longest chase scene. It in the is. Movie. I mean, and it's you know you're you're doing. I guess is like I I read the same Wikipedia article Eric did. Apparently, this is another urban legend wherein a woman gets killed on the radio and everyone thinks it's a bit. Yes. Yeah. Um, that, that's it's something. Called War of the World. <laughs> <laughs> For my next radio program, I'm going to murder a woman on the air, and everyone will think it's just a clever show of one Orson Welles. And last night, yes, I did have to get my stomach pumped. <laughs> you know why. Be right back after these messages. Oh, there's sponsorship? <laughs> one eight seven seven cars for kids <laughs> Cars for kids. You know, the French champagne. (laughs) (laughs) Um, She gets fucking killed. Uh, Alicia Witt shows up just in time to watch it happen. Yeah. And, like, this is when... This is when this is when the movie like you can trim eight minutes off this movie. The the, oh, the, nice. the cat and mouse back and forth. The we'll truck go, fight. There's an out and out <laughs> truck fight in this movie. <laughs> so basically, it, it culminates. Uh, it, Alicia Witt, uh, Jared Leto, and Rebecca Gayhart get into a car. Leto's car. Leto's car. Uh, they go to the a gas station. By the way, uh, uh, not an insignificant detail. Poor fucking uh, Brad Dourif is cool in his heels in jail this entire movie. Oh, yeah. Dude, he is sent to jail and never heard from again. <laughs> nope. Um, also, uh, coincidentally, I think they go to the gas station that the woman at the beginning of the movie drove by. Oh, man, the good gas station. <laughs> um, and yeah, she went to some rundown piece of shit. They're at a sheets. Let's, let's just wait for a speedway. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, while he, while Jared Leto's in the gas station to get to call the police or something, and they're like, "Yes, sir, it's a prank." I'm sorry, I'd love to come out there, <laughs> but the deed said it's a prank. No, so uh, they open the trunk, and oops, Robert England's in there. They're like, "Oh my God, Jared Leto!" Blah blah blah. They wind up getting back to this big spooky haunted house for, for some reason. I After guess. like a run through the woods, it's like twenty minutes. Um. In this house, Alicia Witt finds all of the bodies. This is very, I know what you did last summer. Oh, it's God. also very, bo- it's Halloween. Yes. yes. Rebecca Gayhart is laying down on the bed like Annie Brackett oh, right. in the end of Halloween, supposed to be like Judith Myers with the headstone. Gotcha. Totally I, ripped. I was thinking, oh, fuck, she's alive. Oh, fuck, she's alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Somebody, somebody call somebody. <laughs> uh, but so, um, yes. Uh, she finds all the dead bodies, which, by the way, Rebecca Gayhart, again, bless her soul, is bench pressing all these bodies <laughs> and li- lifting the dean, this 60 year old dean. I'm into- sorry, there needs to be like a witchcraft angle or yes, something. Yes, absolutely. You know, Dude, light you just see feather, her hard like, board. she's like waving a wand and like the dean's dead. Tall old man body. Oh, does a weekend at Bernie's walk? Yes. Oh, that maybe that's what it is, dude. Yeah. Calypso music. Definitely. <laughs> well, she, and she also does heavy duty design. Joshua Jackson's in like a Hellraiser closet. <laughs> There's like chains and hooks. I don't know what. Like that guy got double murdered. I, it just and like how she got all these bodies into this creepy house. Whatever. Uh, yes, Alicia Witt finds Re- Re- Rebecca Gayhart on the bench. She's like, oh, Rebecca Gayhart, wake up. And uh-oh, it was Rebecca Gayhart the whole time. She's like crying. She's sitting there with her back to the quote-unquote corpse. Yeah. Rebecca Gayhart sits up and starts like attacking her. We get the whole parlor thing. Apparently, she was like engaged to be married to the dude that uh, Alicia Witt and the friend from the beginning ran off the yes. road. By the way, this is some of the worst acting you'll ever see. Oh, right? absolutely. Rebecca Gayhart's <laughs> fine for most of the movie. You know, just a regular, you know, teen actress-ish kind of thing. Yeah. But man, it's that like, I'm being loopy fucking crazy. Give that girl a dollar prize because I'm fucking nuts. Well, because it's we fucking saw Scream and yeah. it's like you just got to overact like Matthew Lillard oh, did. That's okay. the thing. Yeah. Even Tell though, you. like, that overacting is part of, like, the Stu Marker character. That's the Matthew Lillard uh, trademark. Oh, yeah. Exactly. No, I mean, it's Matthew Lillard doing Matthew Lillard. Doing, you know? it, doing his thing. His non-shaggy thing. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it's bad, man. It's fucking bad jeans. And she's got a fucking slideshow, by the way. She's a, yep. She takes out the carousel. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you see your life ruined, one, sli- one slide at a time. <laughs> What are you doing? I, I, I'm doing a, I was doing a Don Draper, a bad Don Draper. I, oh. I can see. I was thinking more of 
Do you see? You are witnessing a great becoming. I am Rebecca Gayhart. You know, most of that show was a bad Don Draper. This guy was a bad guy. He was, he was, he was a, a nasty Dick Whitman, dude. <laughs> and um, Jared Leto shows up and like, because Rebecca Gayhart is in love with Jared Leto for some reason. Oh, I mean, how could you not be, right? Well, we're made hip to that mm. to backtrack just very briefly because sure. it's another important way to date this movie to the letter at that party alicia witt is making out with jared leto after sure. all their investigation adventures sure but rebecca gayhart has told alicia witt already that she's like crushing on him or whatever yeah so she gets pissed off and as she's exiting this house party what is on the soundtrack all <laughs> right blaring for the all the campus to hear Cherry Pop and Daddy Zoot Suit Ryan. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and she sits on the porch and is crying, and it's just like, throw back a bottle of beer. <laughs> well, see, Rebecca Gayhart should know that, like, this this thing, even if she is with Leto, it's not going to last for long. Eventually, she's going to fucking hook up with Christopher Moltisante. <laughs> <laughs> I roll a comb through your cold black hair. <laughs> so... <laughs> Man, that it's, song sucks. That, sucks. It sucks ass. That was our song. <laughs> I, you know, my I, fiance that you killed. <laughs> that I was gonna walk song. down the aisle <laughs> after we were wed to suit suit right. I was gonna come into the church to squirrel nut zippers <laughs> in the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> You know, actually, there's a, the, the only way if you if you get the 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 non radio edit of Zoot Suit Riot, uh-huh. you play it's Pinhead, and he goes, "I have such wonderful <laughs> songs to show you." Because <laughs> it's from it just, hell. Yeah, it's from See, the urban legend I heard it was from Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. <laughs> oh, oh yes. So um, you and me and the bottle makes three tonight. Uh, 1997 was terrible. <laughs> a dark time for everyone. So, Am I watching Swingers? Right oh, God. <laughs> Late Clinton. Not uh, good. <laughs> so um, she winds up, uh, she, like Jared Leto tries to flirt with her and he's like, yeah, I'm in on it, baby. Don't worry about it. We'll kill her. Oh, that's right. And I'll, get this... a, I'll get the real Pulitzer this time. It's so dumb. It's like, let's team up. We can like frame whoever they're gonna yeah. frame. We'll be a team. Yeah. We'll be. I think he throws in something about being rich beyond their wildest dreams, <laughs> sure. just for good measure. Sure, of course. Uh, but she figures that out. She's like, you're a bad liar. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Loretta Devine shows up. She like tries to cuff her. And there's a scuffle. She shoots her in the back. You know. Uh, at some point, Loretta Devine is like slashed in the side or something. Yeah, again, and also like, guess what? Uh, Rebecca Gayhart is not getting one over on Loretta Devine either. No, I'm sorry. Please. No, no. I'm sorry, everybody. But also, Loretta Devine's character should be killed in this movie. Yes. She's the best character, but she should sacrifice her life to save these terrible kids. I know where you're going with this, so go right ahead. She's the only character <laughs> that carries over in the second one. Yeah, oh, and she is a major part of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, she's I mean, a bigger uh, character in that movie than she is in this one. Good Dude, they knew what the audience was returning for. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll buy a ticket. Loretta Devine better be fucking in it. I better see my favorite security guard in this movie. And who? The the girl from House? <laughs> no. oh, oh, right. Jennifer Morrison's the main character, yeah. right? Yikes. Oh, oh boy. Dude. And your friend from Hell on Wheels, the main guy. Anson Munt, yeah, man. Yeah. Also known as Bohannon. Yes, Bohannon. <laughs> so whatever. They wind up... Uh, she falls out a window, and they think it's over. And then, like... so. Uh, by the way, Alerta Divine is bleeding to death, right? Yes. She's bleeding to death. We cut... It's Jared Leto driving in the rain with Alicia Witt, and she's like, is Reese going to be okay? Reese is Loretta Devine. It's like, yeah, 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 ambulances are coming after her. We just, we're just leaving the scene of a quadruple homicide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Don't worry yeah. about it. it it's like, so it's, fucking stupid. The it, end of this movie needs to be them and those fucking blankets in the back of I an need ambulance. those foil blankets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Give me those foil look, blankets big time. Look, Alicia, I put the note in her pocket. They're going <laughs> to find it, and they'll know that we left. I'm very hungry right now. <laughs> Wait, think- I accidentally wrote... We'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Do you think, like, because what happens is, like, she gets shot again and yeah. she falls out the window. Yeah. Do you think that they were like, and then Alicia Witt and Jared Leto look out the window and she's gone and Cherry Pop and Daddy starts playing again. <laughs> and they were like, no, that's like, you're directly ripping off the very end of Halloween. Sure. Oh, right. Well, let's leave this woman bleeding to death <laughs> and just put them in a car for no reason. Exactly. It just It's really... 
it's either tacked on like a bad, maybe it was a bad like first showing kind of a thing or test oh, test audience situation. Like yeah, classic test audience fail. It makes no sense why you would speed away from this woman who saved your life. Um, so, but whoops, who's in the back seat? Up to her old tricks, Rebecca Gayhart with a, the world's biggest axe. It's another. I think she stole Freddy Krueger's axe this time. Uh, but you know, big set piece. She goes through the window off a bridge. The bridge explodes. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> they roll over the car and throw her over a bridge. No, uh, she <laughs> goes through through the window in, uh, into the water. And like, wow, the movie is over. And we see her floating face up mm. uh, down the river and whatnot. And then we cut to, it's like, I don't know, a year later, whatever sure. the fuck it is. It's another group of even more nobody nobodies. Sure. And they're just telling this tale. Although this must yeah. be sometime later. There's a black gentleman sitting oh, here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Congratulations. So the school's trying to figure itself out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's just these nobodies. And they're telling the story of the movie. Oof, and I'm it's just... like, yeah. And that's the story of the super urban legend. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so <laughs> the movie was fake? <laughs> My, I'm, I'm sorry. What? What? I just have to say because my favorite. They they say urban legend a million times in this movie. Like yes. you, you can't even count it. But at one point, at the end of the movie, when uh, Rebecca Hart is about to kill Alicia Witt, she's like, "You know what I'm gonna do to you, Alicia Witt? It's my favorite UL. It's the uh, no. it's, it's the kidney in a, in a bathtub bit. Oh, oh right. yes, 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 yes. But like. Call, in the biz, we call it UL. So, yeah. You know what I mean? If you're yeah. in, a, in yeah. the know, you just call it a UL. Can I tell you? UL message boards. <laughs> I missed that line, but all through my notes, I just kept writing UL. <laughs> oh, wow. So, you're in the biz. I guess so. Well, UL is, UL is big on the three guys who wrote books on urban legends <laughs> that still live with their parents. That's but the saddest convention you'll go to. We get uh, one, of the, one of the women who's telling the story is like, Oh yeah! Next thing you're gonna tell me that the killer was the Noxima girl, which is like, uh, it's a yeah. thud. It's that sucks. That almost sucks more than the Dawson's Creek joke because it's the end of the movie. This is like you know, what it stays in your mouth. I am waiting anxiously to rip this tape out of the VCR <laughs> and drive back to Blockbuster as fast as I can. Precisely. Do not give me this scene and do not give me fucking winky oh, yeah. jokes in the last oh. two minutes of the movie. Oh, this went in the slot. I wasn't handing this to anybody. <laughs> this was in the overnight slot. Fuck you. Fuck you, you show for making me watch it. at 3 o'clock in the morning. You make sure nobody's around. You spray paint the fucking security cameras. <laughs> I you want anybody to know you rented this movie. I want to call. I might call the next day and say, make sure you got it. Um, and this is the worst. At the end. The worst thing. You're not going to believe this, you guys. Wait, she's, what? She's there, and she's like, <laughs> and by the way, that's not how that story went at all. Let me tell you how it really happened. Dude, Credits. And, oh, man. And it's also a, okay, listen up, guys. Yeah. And you're like. <laughs> it's, it, and it's the killer, right? Yeah, yeah it's her. It's, it's, it's Rebecca sorry. Gayhart. Yay. 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 She lived and the movie was better in her story. We're not hearing. <laughs> <laughs> and then she doesn't return for the sequel. No. Bizarre. Bizarre. It's kind of fucking. Funny. I think she might be in a flashback, possibly. Oh sure. Oh, oh someone's inspired by her work. Oh, oh. that's how that goes. Copycat. Huh? Sure. What did you say? Copycat. Oh yes, of course. Get uh, Sigourney Weaver on the case. Mm. Yeah, previous yeah. episode. <laughs> uh, and that's the end of this movie. Would anybody recommend it? I would. Uh, it's 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 one of you, it's your classic like. You read the Amazon description, and it's exactly that. It's exactly what it says it is. Yeah. No more, no, a little too more, but uh, no, no less. Certainly no surprises. It's actually kind of like a perfect um, amalgamation. A, it's a, a Scream ripoff, and like like you said, it's a nine, late 90s Screamiverse thing. But it's also kind of in the mold of those like early 80s slashers, whodunits, we're yeah. avenging an old tragedy. Yeah, probably that's filmed in soft lens, kind of like, like a Prowler or yeah, April like Fool's the Prowler, Day. Graduation mm -hmm. Day, yeah. Final Exam, yeah. all of those cutting April, class, April like, Fool's Day. Oh yeah, cutting class with Brad Pitt. It just it reminds me so much of one of those movies. Yeah, totally. Skip it. Oh. Bad death. Like I, I just I, I didn't like any of the deaths. Oh wow, well. all right. I kind of was let down by almost. And my God, I mean, you have to deal with so much of Jared Leto. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like, okay, if you have a high tolerance for him, fine. <laughs> high tolerance. That's great. But like, I can't. I can't. I can't do You're this. You're like, I've watched every Jared Leto movie. My Leto tolerance is through the roof. I, I can't deal with this. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I would say if you want to like scratch that particular like '90s itch, like yeah. you've seen Scream a bunch, and you want to see something that's very similar, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I mean, it's fine. It's if you got nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I would recommend it. Soft soft recommend, I guess it's sure. fine. But like, yeah, I just I was I was keeping a, I was on Wikipedia. I was keeping a list of some of these things. But like, the House on Haunted Hill remake. Well, like, yeah. listen to these movies: The Rage, Carrie Two, yep. Book of Shadows, Blair Witch Two, Dracula Two Thousand, Final Destination, Ginger Snaps, Lost Souls. The sequel to this called Final Cut, Scream 3, Jason X, Jeepers Creepers, Scary Movie, 13 Ghosts, The Faculty, Halloween Age 2O, The I Still Know What You Did Last Summer's, Fear.com, Halloween Resurrection, The Forsaken. All of these are like bad 90s soundtracks, bad old Navy costumes, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and snappy scripts, more or less. There's a whole genre of these things. A lot of those scratch my... I'm I'm a scream head, man. So am I. And it's like... So that's why this is like... Fine. Yes. But don't, you know, bend over backwards and check it out or anything like that. Uh, and that is Urban Legend, everybody. The second to last mm-hmm. of the 2018 Spooktacular episodes uh, directed by Jamie Blanks, of course. Uh, if you want more We Hate Movies, head on over to patreon.com slash We Hate Movies. It is chock full of bonus content, whether it be bonus episodes like Van Helsing, which is out now. Or Ready or, Player One, if you haven't gotten right. around to it. Bright, Man of Steel, Ghost Rider, Spirit of It. There's tons and Eric, tons. Eric, are tons. we having a commentary that might be up for horror fans? That's right. Coming out uh, by the end of the month or so is yep. Nightmare on Elm Street remake Mentary. We will be talking over that disgusting remake of Nightmare on Elm Street with... Um, What's that? What, what, what's uh, the actor's name? Jackie again? Earl Haley. Yes, the creep from Doll Man. Uh, Everyone uh, knows him I, from you know Doll what? Man. J E H. Excuse me. I've been given. I gave Rebecca Gayhart a lot of shit this episode. She could take Garrett, J- Jackie Earl Haley in a fight like that. She'd drop him like a bag of rocks. <laughs> that's actually true. That I would like to see. Now that that's a crossover. <laughs> if I'm she's sure. like, she got him in her news. She's lifting him all the way up. <laughs> uh, yeah. And by the way, nary a snappy line of dialogue to be found in that in that screenplay. No, 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 no. What a cruel movie. Like us on Facebook, I guess. Follow us on Twitter. We are at WHM Podcast. And of course, right into the mailbag. We all hate movies at gmail.com. Uh, Steve Sadak for the final spectacular episode of 2018 what are we going out on uh, it's going to be a steve sadak loves movies it's wishmaster oh shit a lot of franchises this year i love yeah. it by the way also i believe robert england is also in that movie yeah I he is so. and yeah. kane hotter's in wishmaster isn't he i believe yes. so yeah, a, yeah. A, yeah. all the booger men oh a lot fuck. of weird little com uh, little Ooh. combos around a lot, there. a lot of booger men <laughs> <laughs> so until next week with more boogerman than you can stomach i'm andrew jupin steven sadak chris cabin eric legend take it easy <laughs> there you go we all go a little mad sometimes you know it's halloween i guess everyone's entitled one good scare huh? sometimes that is what i Time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. They're coming to get you, Barbara. He's sick for fucks. You've seen one too many movies. Now, Sid, don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. Put the fucking illusion in the bag. What an excellent day for an exorcist. That was a HeadGum Podcast.